Good morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name as we come to worship our Lord and Savior here in this Advent season here at St. John. We're glad that you're here, whether you're here with us on site or you're joining us online. We're glad that we are able to worship together, to worship our Lord and Savior as we anticipate that Christmas celebration of Christ coming into this world that first time, but then also rejoicing that he will come again to take us to be with him. As uh, we uh, continue in our worship service, uh, things are printed on the screen for us, and also during uh, communion there is a uh, hymn. There were uh, printed copies of that in the back. Right after our service, we're going to begin right away into our voters' meeting, so just to let you know on that um, so that we can get through uh, those agenda items as quickly as possible. Let us stand as we begin our time of worship together. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and truth. Open our hearts and minds to receive the message again that you are our Lord and Savior. May it truly transform our lives so that as we leave here, we will be nourished and uplifted to proclaim your joy, your peace in Jesus Christ to a world that so desperately needs to hear it. Thank you, Lord, for this time of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Let your, ladder, let, let your light scatter the darkness. We light three candles on our Advent wreath this morning. We come down to a time of confession and absolution. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Which hymn? I 347. Okay, well, let's uh, actually, let's pull out our hymnals and let's do 347. Okay. Verses 1 and 2. 1 and 2.
continue now with our scripture readings. The New Testament reading, or the Old Testament reading for today is found in Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low, the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people our grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up, get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not, says the cities of Judah. Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules from, for him. Behold, his, renew, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is found in 1 Corinthians 4, 1 through 5. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is, required of, of, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me, Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time before the Lord comes. Who will bring to light the things that, that things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purpose of the heart that each one will receive his commendation from God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our gospel reading for today is from Matthew chapter 11. When John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word to his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up. And the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. And they went away. Or as they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of woman, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we join in our next hymn on Jordan's Banks, the Baptist Cry, and hopefully that's the right hymn. Is that the right one? Yeah, we got it right this time. Excellent.
words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here today be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Continuing in our theme of Advent Reformation, of focusing our attention on Christ in this celebration of Christmas, we know how much Christmas has become bigger in the sense of how the world has taken it over, but we want to focus on the true meaning of Christmas. I mean, even in the name itself, Christ, that we celebrate who Christ is. The last uh, two weeks ago, we had worshiping fully, that when we are worshiping God, that we're directing our attention to Christ. That is important. Last week, we talked about spending less or maybe spending smarter, knowing that we spend a lot of resources on Christmas, but how are we spending it is probably the more important thing, and how can we direct it in a way that gives honor and glory to God? This week, I want to actually focus on the last two, because next week we'll have our children's Christmas program. So I want to uh, focus on the give more and love all. And so we're going to focus on those two and kind of see how we can direct our hearts and minds to be focused on that wonderful Christmas message. And then next week with our children kind of showing to us that Christmas story, I think it'll be a wonderful way to also prepare our hearts for that celebration of Christmas. But I want to begin to this morning with talking about, well, what you see there on the screen, a present. I mean, that seems to be one of the biggest things of Christmas. I mean, yes, all the getting ready for Christmas, but we get ready for that day in, in which we share presents with each other. That we share those gifts that we have bought for others, and we're excited about the gifts that we have gotten. And so, present is an important thing in Christmas. But I want to kind of change that word just a little bit here to think about how it can truly be a way to celebrate who Christ is and to think of the word not present with a T on the end, but presence with a C-E at the end. That we are present with each other. Our presence is a very important thing. In fact, really, that is what the gospel is all about. It's about God's presence with us. I mean, the name given to Jesus by the angel telling to Mary is that his name would be Emmanuel, God with us. And so we have presence at Christmas, but really it's the presence of God that is the most important thing. And not only the presence of God, but because of his presence with us, it then informs how we are present in our presence with each other. I really like the psalmist here in Psalm 116, verse 11, where it says, In your presence there is fullness of joy. The psalmist recognized that being in the presence of God... That's where we find true joy. There are all kinds of pursuits and things that we have in this world, all kinds of things that are important, all kinds of things that we do. Spending time with our family, spending time in our job and career, spending time with, fam or with friends that we have. All of those are good things, but the most important thing is our presence with God. Now, because of our sinfulness, we often are not in the presence of God. We often do other things that keep us from the presence of God. But that's the amazing thing, again, of the gospel, is that God comes to us. He is present with us. His presence fills this room, fills this world, fills our very lives. And that's a mystery in the waters of baptism, that the Holy Spirit it enters into us, and his presence dwells in us. In fact, Paul even talked about that our bodies are a temple for God. His presence is here with us and in us. And so that is where we find true joy, in the presence of God. You could say in the way that it is the greatest gift of all. I mean, at Christmas time, don't we often try to either, you know, give the greatest gift or we're excited about that good gift that we're going to get, but really the greatest gift of all is that God came to us, that he was present with us, that he came to 
be one of us, but also then to take on our sin and then to take it away from us, to forgive our sins and to give us new life in him. That is the greatest gift of all, that God is with us. He's present with us. And so the presence of Christmas can remind us of God's true presence with us. And that is what we focus first on. Why we worship fully, why we we think about what our spending habits are, why we prepare our hearts and minds for the Christmas season. So that our minds are focused, our lives are focused on the presence of God in our lives. But it's also important in the sense of our relationships. You see, again, at Christmas, it's a great time to give presents. Presents are wonderful ways that we show our love for each other. To find that gift that we know fits that person so well and we're excited about giving that to them. We're excited about the things that we might receive as well. And that's a, that's a great tradition. But oftentimes it may trump the true thing that's important at Christmas, and that is our presence with each other. Now, I know in this season, in this year, how it may be difficult to have that physical presence with certain family members. But that doesn't mean we can't be present with them. Presence sometimes doesn't mean that physical presence with them, but that we are mindful of the people that are part of our family, the people that we love, that we're mindful of them and think of them and find ways to connect with them. That's one of the blessings of technology. I know technology can be a curse too as well, but the blessing blessing is, is that we have new ways of being present with people. As long as the internet stays going well, We can be present with people. But that presence could also be a simple thing as writing a letter, calling on a telephone. Presence means that we care enough for those people that we are mindful of them and that we will spend time with them. And there are multiple ways that we can do that. And so our presence oftentimes is more important than the presence that we give that we are mindful and present with those that we love. And it can be informed even more in this word, being present. Being present in the moment to recognize Jesus as our Lord and Savior and how that changes our lives. But then that makes us also be present in the moment in the things that are going on around us. The New Testament talks over and over again that when Christ is a part of our lives, it informs how we treat other people, how we interact in this world. And to be present in this world means that we are sharing God's presence in this world. So as we are present with God, may we also be present in this world as we proclaim Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So this one, I think, is the best way to kind of sum it up here. Being present is just as important as giving presents. Being present in this season to take that time to listen again to that story of Jesus. It's so familiar to us, sometimes we just kind of wash over it. But to marvel again that God came to us. Because he loves us and cares for us. Being present in the moment to rejoice with those around us, whether they're physically present or not, but not to be so caught up with the future, so caught up with the past that we miss what's going on right now. And to be present with those that we love. To be in the moment. To celebrate what God has done for us in Christ Jesus and what that means for our whole life and our relationships with each other. You see, presence are things. Presence is a relationship. May we foster those relationships with Christ and with each other. And may that focus us again this season 
May that reform our lives to rejoice again in this Christmas season that God is present with us. Amen. We continue now in our worship service with the prayers of the church. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the love that you have shown to us. The greatest gift of all of sending your son, Jesus Christ, to be our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for that greatest gift. But that greatest gift truly is that you are present with us, that you are with us, that you dwell in us. What a mystery that is, but what a joy that is as well. That no matter where we are, no matter the circumstances in our lives, you are always with us. Remind us of that always. Remind us of that, especially when we face difficulties in our lives. We pray for those who are in need of your healing touch, that you would remind them that you are with them in their time of need. We continue to pray for Mark and for Donald, for Wayne and for Estella, for Dennis and for Joanne, for Frank and for Janet, for Rosemary, for Don, for Marty, for Shelley and for Donald, for Danielle and for Jessica, for Carol and for Matthew and for Roxanne, for Luke and for Larry and for Marshall, for Profe Maria and for Carol and her husband, for Chris and for Gail and for Jim. Lord, in their difficult times, we pray that you would remind them always that you are with them, that you are comforting them, and if it be your will, that you grant full healing to them, but that they can trust in your presence with them. Lord, we pray, too, for the family of Clarice Pershke as they mourn her loss. But, Lord, we know that our loss is actually a gain in eternal life, as Clarice is with you in eternal life, because she proclaimed you as her Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for that gift that you have given to her, that greatest gift of new life with you. But for her family, Lord, we pray that you would bring comfort and peace as they mourn her loss. And in that grief, to find comfort in you, that you are truly present with them now, and that you will continue to be with them until we are face to face with you in eternal life. Lord, we pray for our community, for our nation, for our world. Where there is strife, Lord, we pray for your peace. Where there is difficulty, we pray for wisdom and guidance. Lord, for where there is confusion, we pray for your clarity. But all of these things, Lord, we know that in this broken and sinful world, we need you. Remind us, Lord, of your presence with us and your presence that is within this world. May we proclaim that in all that we do and all that we say. Thank you, Lord, also for the gift of the Lord's Supper where you are truly present with us to nurture us through your body and blood, broken and shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for that gift as well, that wonderful gift that sustains us and leads us to that point at which we will be with you in eternal life. Lord, we lift all these prayers before you, knowing and trusting that your good and gracious will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bring forward our offerings now that we have collected to further God's kingdom. In a moment here, we will come to the Lord's table to receive his body and blood broken and shed for us. We have these individual containers that have both the bread and the wine in them with pull tabs on them. 
uh, the bread on the one side and the wine on the other side. Just be careful as you uh, pull those tabs off. Uh, you actually don't even have to pull them all the way off uh, to use them. Once you've received them, once you've received the blessing, we do have uh, places in which you can um, put those as before their little bowls there before you head back to your seats. You will be ushered up in smaller groups as we come forward to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Let us stand now as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Glorious Father in heaven, we, your children, who are filled with your spirit and guided by your word of truth, lift your name on high and sing your praises this day. You have redeemed us from hell, death, and the devil through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As your forgiven children, we come to your throne of grace to receive the gift you provide for us, the true body and blood of our Savior. Nurture our faith in Christ as we stand united as one holy people, lifting our voices and singing. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We join in singing.
I invite you to stand. We've come to the Lord's table to receive his body and blood broken and shed for us. May it nurture our lives as we go out from here to proclaim Christ's presence in this world. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. A couple announcements in regards to our life together. Again, thank you for worshiping uh, with us this morning. We continue with our Sunday and Wednesday worship services, both here and also online. So those who joined us online, we appreciate that you are worshiping with us as well. Stay connected with us multiple ways, through our phone, through email, uh, through our website. Uh, there are ways that you can connect with us and ways that we can connect with you. Uh, we do have a regular email list that goes out on Friday. If you're not receiving that, you can either go to the website or contact our office and make sure that we get you on that so that you can see that information as it comes up. This next week, as we are getting closer to our Christmas time, a couple activities that are coming up. One is Christmas caroling will be on next Sunday, the 20th, at 1 p.m. Uh, they'll be visiting uh, homes and being able to, to, to sing outside for several people who are not able to join us uh, here. And so that'll be a great opportunity to uh, spread the presence of Christ, really, in our community by uh, Christmas caroling. But that'll be at 1 p.m. Uh, this next Sunday. Also, next Sunday will be our uh, Sunday school Christmas program during our 9 a.m. worship service. And so we're excited about that for our children to proclaim that Christmas story to us as well. But that'll be uh, next Sunday as part of our service. Then our Christmas Eve service. We've had the, the poll. I've been telling you about the different times and stuff. We've kind of finalized things uh, because of where we saw things going with, the, with uh, people were saying that about 80% wanted to come at 5 o'clock. <laughs> so our 5 o'clock service is going to be our festival service with our hymn sing at the beginning of our worship time at 5 p.m. Uh, and I'll, I'll, most of our special music will be in our 5 p.m. worship service. But then at 7 p.m., we're going to offer communion as part of that service. That will not be in the 5 p.m., but at the 7 p.m. service. So quiet was the best word I could come up with, just in the sense that we won't have necessarily all the special music, but it'll be more kind of a reflective thing. Both services will have the candlelight as part of the silent night type of thing. But 7 p.m. we'll have communion, and 5 p.m. will be our kind of hymn singing and special music time. So... So please be aware of that. I mean, we do have limitations in how many we can have in here, so please be aware of that as well and kind of choose appropriately. Uh, the 5 p.m. service will be the one that will also uh, stream online, so that service will be streamed online. Christmas Day, we have our 10 a.m. worship service, and that service also will have communion as part of that. Any other announcements in regards to our life together? Okay, as our morning is going to go, we're going to end with our uh, closing song here. And then right after the song, uh, just give us about five minutes here and we'll get ourselves set up for our um, voters meeting that we're going to have right after uh, this time. So we're kind of keeping you trapped here a little bit. But anyways, no, um, that voters meeting is an important one and we've got several items that we want to get through and get through that in a timely way. So that'll happen right after uh, we sing our song together. So I invite you to stand as we join in our final hymn, Hark the Glad Sound. Thank you. 